Hi, I am, um, is it retrograde again? <laughs> I am, I'm actually just going to get my Facebook streaming going. My Zoom is not working. So, um, you know, we just improvise when that is happening. So I'm just going to turn on my recording. Um, and then we can start. Hi! <laughs> everyone was trying to get on Zoom and everyone got denied. So um, I'm so glad that uh, you could join me on um, Instagram. And, um, and send me any, hi! <laughs> send me any um, questions too. I know that people are going through a lot right now. So um, I'm gonna uh, be doing a healing also. Um, so any requests for healings, um, please just text them and, um, and then I will be doing it. And today we are um, going to be doing the Energy Works process. It's really about inner change, you know, changing internally, especially because we have no choice now. You know, when we look at all the chaos happening externally, um, we can actually, this can really evolve us into true transformation, into true growth. And we're going to be working a five-step process today. And so in this process of, you know, internal change, when we see the world so chaotic out there and all of this coming up, surfacing, you know, it's kind of, we've been in a retrograde. What that means is it's like we're in Martin Luther King Day. You know, we're, we're having a view of what it was like then. And so much emotion, so, so many backspace pictures were coming up, pictures that are stored, stuck, and um, just pain, and things that we haven't resolved, things that we need to confront and face right now, things that we need to transform, and, you know, bring light to it in a new way. So the first step in um, this five, part process of working kind of our internal space is we must start to face the fear. Kind of facing the fear, facing kind of our fears coming up, other people's fears coming up when you look at the news, all the fear. When we can start to face it and confront it, it can start to disappear. And hey, Heather. <laughs> and the second step in this five-step process is um, accepting it, kind of not accepting necessarily what we just see, but really starting to accept what it is that we're looking at, kind of our own backspace that's coming up. And then the third step is about embracing it. This is kind of embracing those wounds that um, we're all experiencing, our inner child wounds, things that um, are playing out in the past. Hi, Erin. Um, happy birthday and late birthday <laughs> and the fourth step is you know the process of, of energy work is moving it you know uh, we cannot create and destroy but we can uh, transform things so um, what's coming up today what's been coming up in this time we're going to look at because you know we're actually having access to allow kind of the dark depths come out First step is face the fear. Second step, accept what we're looking at because if we look away, if we shut ourselves off, then we don't have this opportunity for true transformation. And this way we can embrace it, that third step, and move it. So we're gonna do a process. Moving it is the energy works piece because change only occurs with movement as opposed to being stuck. And Really why kind of all of this is coming up is so we can have more access to creating from greater whole, our wholeness. And the only way really to create from greater whole is to be in our center. And when we can be and occupy the center space, then we can start to unify the duality that we're looking at in our life. And so um, when we look at our fear and just what is coming up for everyone, maybe it is, well, it's, 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 I mean, it's all over. Fear is all over. And 
what happens though is when we are dealing with fear and you can even see it in the media you know um, there are certain people that want to take power and um, when you have fear you may have feelings of being inadequate maybe being uncertain where you lose control of a certain part of your life and so when we feel out of control in any way what will happen is um, you know there are are people that want to maintain order, place control in place, or we can even see it in our own lives of maybe we become very controlling in our environment, we start to organize the space, or maybe even with family, maybe um, a spouse becomes controlling to the other spouse and children. And if you have fear, you know, I want you to really notice what you do in response to your fear. Do you hide? Do you not want to be seen? Do you, you know, kind of separate off from other people? Because um, this fear is too much for you to even confront and deal with. And today we are in a safe space and a place where we can kind of look at this and hold this on this new foundation because when we can confront something like this, in confronting it, then it can disappear. It can transform into something new. So what happens with this fear, kind of the automatic response, and you know, even if you look at your childhood, if you had a chaotic childhood, um, what happens is we want protection. In my chaos growing up, what did I do? I married a boxer. <laughs> protection. Wanting protection. But that's external protection in a sense. And external protection, or we want, you know, the authorities to protect us or government to protect us, or something external to protect us. And when we don't necessarily that doesn't really create change. It's like a false sense of protection. And then it makes us even more vulnerable. And so this automatic kind of response to our fear is I wanna be protected, I wanna be safe. But how we can do this even for ourselves is we can start to talk to our inner child, kind of like direct our attention inward. And there's Dexter saying hello. <laughs> our attention kind of inward means that the part of us that is afraid that we can say, I am supporting you. I am here for you. I am going to, you know, be with you with my attention on you. Attention placed kind of on that and giving the light to where that fear is, it can come out of the darkness. And, and really placing your attention within, what it does is it creates kind of this space around you, which we're gonna work in a moment which creates this bubble. It creates a safe place and a safe structure as opposed to placing our attention outward and seeing all the chaos. And then we, it responds, we respond more in fear. And then what do we want? Mm -hmm. We want protection. We want to be safe. And we're going to start packing, I mean, all these different responses that come up, you know, about feeling safe, being safe, wanting that safety. And so, um, you know, so the first kind of step of being safe is turning our attention inward, which we're going to work in a minute. Having that conversation with our inner child, kind of where our needs weren't met, where we were not protected long ago, and that conversation with that child, the child that's hiding, of, you know, how we're going to be there for it, how we're not going to disassociate or take off, but how we're going to care for it. And also, really, when we can focus inward on love, when we can ask the living light, God, or your guides to really come in and provide that care and that safe space, that comfort, where you can access kind of that beautiful energy on your foundation in this time. And so focus on, you know, what's very important you know, as we're watching the news or as we're participating, you know, in um, the demonstrations and or just 
Maybe you've been hiding away because of this safety thing has been triggering you. You know, people have been responding in so many different ways. And, you know, it's very important if you're watching something, you know, if you are against one side, what happens is the moment kind of you're against one side, you will become the energy of what you were against. And so it's very important that, you know, even if you have judgment on the other side, what will happen is then you become in dynamic with that energy. And in that dynamic, that energy will take you over. And then it may even create violence within you. Or you may see this as where you may say things that are really inappropriate. And maybe the languaging isn't quite right. It's kind of like even here in Mill Valley, you know, our mayor said something just very inappropriate. And it was very weird kind of watching watching it. And she's, uh, called, she's brown and she's uh, Indian. But, you know, she was so in her um, conversation and dialogue about the agenda and somebody asked, well, what are we doing in Mill Valley as far as to address kind of the global issue here and especially the nation's issue on um, Black Lives Matter. And she said, well, it's not, it's not a local issue. <laughs> and, you know, and so, but, you know, it's easy then to um, place judgment. And um, when what needs to transform out of this is now there needs to be, she needs to rectify it as far as needing to be a platform where we can have a conversation, where change can occur because, you know, there was just no heart involved, which was very interesting. It was more next agenda. It was like Black Lives Don't Matter. And so when, you know, it's kind of like we need our hearts to get into this conversation, to, to feel it. And a lot of people are feeling very overwhelmed in this time. So what happens is we want to protect our space and then it separates, it separates us even more. And, um, and so I want you to really you know, focus within. Because when we focus within, what happens is, is we don't see somebody as the opposite side of the coin. And if we see them as the opposite side of the coin, like they are the threat, they are the cause, we will become the other opposite side of the coin. When it's like yin and yang. Yin and yang is about balance. And in this balance, there's movement, there's flow, there's equilibrium one connection to the other and this connection creates this movement and that is what we want where we are moving together where we in, we're in harmony we're in balance and with that balance then we can really create a new foundation and a new world and um, my brother-in-law uh, Connor Johnston he um, had placed something on um, Facebook uh, this morning and it was the conversation about, um, he's an eloquent writer, and he was talking about how our languaging, even from a very early age, needs to change. Because our languaging is um, about how we have a wedding dress. You know, white represents kind of um, something that's pure, something that is of light. And how um, even the uh, word black represents black magic, or funerals, or death. And, you know, in um, energy work, we use color all the time. We use color to, um, because color is frequency. Color is vibration. And um, the color black is extremely important because the color black is all colors. It's all colors together. And that means that it's kind of like from all color, something new can be born. All color is creative force, creative energy. It's like in our womb. In our womb, it's black, you know, and from that, from the darkness, you know, comes a color, comes a color out from kind of potential. It, potential comes into reality, which then we can use something to move ourselves forward. So it's very uh, important kind of to use this color, set the color as black today, and um, the energy around this kind of softened black is very important because by embracing it, we can then access
kind of our creative power, our creative potential. And from it can emerge something new. And this is the time that we are in, looking to emerge something new. And so this color can really um, help us confront, confront our fears, confront what is happening and not look away. Because if we look away, you know, it just subsides and it goes deeper into our backspace and goes into the shadow and we haven't integrated it. And now, you know, it's hard to confront something. It's hard to see something, but we want to confront it to embrace it, to digest it. And with this then, this energy can emerge, new life can emerge from it. Black represents actually the foundation. It's like the four, the four corners, kind of the four corners of black represent the foundation on which a new nation can be built, a new reality can be built. And so if you can imagine you standing on this black foundation and on that foundation, it is all color, all life. When you look at the planet, all colors are coming out of her, all life. It is from the swamp, kind of the lotus comes. It is creative energy blooming and coming forth. And right now, you know, from our backspace, it is coming out of all of us for us to see. So we want to see in your life too, what is coming out. Is it an issue? And this, this is all of our issues. This isn't just, you know, um, kind of, you know, one person's issue or a group's issue. This is all of our issues that we must see it. And we must, you know, look at what kind of side of the coin are we playing in this? And as far as not judging others, this is where, you know, we are here as a spirit and a body and we are here to learn. And to learn means we may be playing out one side of the coin where um, in doing that then we start to learn lessons. When we are in duality, what happens is you will either kind of play out the power role or play out the victim role. And in either side, we are learning lessons of what that's like. And you may even switch sides. Maybe you've been a narcissist and then you're a codependent and then, you know, really a lot of times those roles will reverse and change. So, you know, what we have to do now is see if we are attached to one side because the beauty of the color black is that you can see reality from all sides. That you can see not just, you're not just attached to one thing, but that you can, you know, see all different viewpoints. And we need that because we have to move into center. And from center place is then where we can create from greater whole. And that is what we want to move into. So in facing our fears then, in using this color, we can bring into balance kind of, you know, the foundation and bring that light on this foundation for something to new to emerge. So I would like you to um, just turn inward and close your eyes and focus on your breath. As you inhale, allow your heart to start to open up. And as you exhale, just allow the wave of your breath to move down into Mother Earth, into the darkness, into her heart, into the center of the planet. And start to feel the energy of the Earth, that foundation, that black solid energy starting to move up your feet, your ankles, your calves, your legs and allow it to move into the base of your spine and just feel that flow of breath as you release 
and let go of the anxiety or fear and the energy in this time and allow it to move into Mother Earth, her heart. When you move energy into the Earth, she is the one that can change energy and transform manure into new life. And just start to drop your energy and allow your breath to be fluid just like the wave. And you can imagine as your heart just releases the pain in this time, maybe the fear and the anxiety. And as you drop down into the earth, start to allow her to update your body, to renew your physical form. And I'm just going to start to work your energy of where you can start to really ground and calm down, start to lower kind of the amped energy, the chaos, and just keep your attention placed inside, kind of connected to your heart and her heart as that circuit of release, releasing and letting go and renewing. And just let a fear maybe emerge or something that has come up that you want to let go of and just put it in a ball of energy and just move it down to her. Just allow that energy to fully release into the center of the planet to dissolve. And as you're grounding down, this is what makes us safe, stable, secure, and supported. Allow her to renew you with new energy for your new foundation in this time where you can be stable, where you can have the courage to confront kind of the dark, the shadow within you, your backspace. And then we can start to integrate it, that we can see it and not hide. And just focus on that breath as it takes you in this ride of release and renew. And as you're focusing kind of that light on your heart, just allow your heart to fully open up kind of to the light above, to spirit. And you can imagine this as a vortex or like a tornado of light spiraling down. See this pillar of light moving down your central channel all the way through you as it moves into your foundation. That black solid foundation where this energy of light, this pillar of light is filling you up so that you feel safe, that you're comforted with this love and support. And where your attention is within your heart and you are at the center of this vortex, the center of this tornado at the eye of the storm, so that you can be in that peace where you can bring the relationship of the dark and the light in harmony and balance. And as you sit in that eye of the storm, feel the strength and the power of that light, that tornado moving around you. As that opens up that portal where that love comes in, the more this portal opens up, you become this conduit of light where you are bringing in the heaven and the earth in your heart so something new can be born. And as you focus fully within, this is where the answer is within your heart. Allowing 
the heart and this vortex to open, you are asking Mother Earth and Spirit to bring in a new time that we are bringing in justice and peace, this harmony and balance where Black Lives Matter, where we actually see that in our own self, See, we reject kind of black in a sense because it is our own shadow within us that we are unwilling to see. And now we are all ready to embrace kind of the aspects within us that we are unable to see because of being a, a, you know, afraid or fear as a child. And in a sense, the healers, you know, and black, li black lives, they've been the healers. They have been the ones taking on the pain, taking on the crap, the junk of what hasn't been processed, where now we all take responsibility. We all look within ourselves that we make this a safe place for all of us. So we can use this potential energy to create beyond what we know, to create something so great out of that black. And I want you to see kind of this black energy, see its potential, feel it. Feel it vibrate, feel it is, gives birth and life to all things. Kind of the root of creation started in Africa, life to all things and feel the power in that, that there is no fear that we embrace this and that we look at any kind of dark place within ourselves and confront it. And we start to ground and release where we start to get afraid, start to hop out of our space. It's very important kind of as you're fully committed to looking inward, it's kind of like a top, as you move inward, kind of that top spins and it keeps you in your center. In your center, you are able to create from wholeness, from your center, you have a connection from spirit above, from mother earth below, from the right side, which is the negative, the left, which is, I mean, the right side is the positive, the left, the negative, where you are connected to your intention, kind of future and the past, all connected into center. See, when we embrace the black energy, then we see all things, all potential. And as you're focusing kind of with that light, allow a color to emerge. Focus on one color that is coming up out of that space. Something to be born. Something new for this time. And allow it to be connected to your voice. Everyone has been saying how their throat hurts or they're, they've been channeling in, you know, a lot of comments that they don't even know where it's coming from. And so if we get ungrounded, this is why I drop down into the ground. If we get ungrounded, what happens? It's like if you drink alcohol, you start to channel, you start to say things, you, you're channeling in spirits. So if we are not focused on our center, if we are focused outside of ourselves, seeing I see that person as bad, then what happens, their energy comes in us, we lose our ground, our ground gets pulled up, we start to channel. And what happens is, this is where we start to amp up. When you feel anxious, even, you know, things may be happening, all this chaos, your ground's coming up. When you feel anxious, what happens is, there is another energy that will feed off you. And so 
if you're outer focused, that is when things hook into the neck and then they start to feed off you. So it's very important that our path and how we change the world is our internal, in the center of the heart. So place your attention within. Being committed here means if I have a problem with someone else, I'm not gonna run my attention or think about them. I'm gonna put them in a ball and move it down into the earth. Mother, you transform it. I'm going to hand it over to spirit. In the vertical, spirit, you transform it. I'm going to keep vertical because in keeping vertical, this vortex of light, we are the conduit for this vortex of light to come onto this foundation. And when those two meet, kind of even within the heart, what happens then is we create a new nation. So focus on this vortex coming down and the earth coming up in your heart and allow a color to be born to give birth and see what that color is for this time for you, for your next step. See that this color that you are creating from wholeness, that you embrace the black, that you embrace wholeness. And with this color, you are asking it, what does it wanna create in this time? How can you serve? What can you do? How can you show up in this time? As you focus inward, just allow kind of your attention to move outward and start to notice when you get so focused on the news, when you're so focused on kind of what somebody said, what someone did, what, it, what a, the anarchists, the chaos makers, the, the chaos makers, do you know? Notice if you start to feel anxious, what will happen is I need protection, right? So to feel protection, we must go in. This is where safety lies. When we commit here, we start to see the world from wholeness. And in wholeness, we accept every color. We see things from every side because we are a part of the whole. So place your attention within your heart and allow God and allow Mother Earth to give birth something that they are creating in this time, that we are the vessel for this to arrive, that we are here in this time to bring in miracles, to bring in the light. If you look outside of yourself in the chaos, the chaos is just a reflection Kind of of potential energy of a transition of something new and so by looking inward at that empty space that is where the grace lies and so as we spin spin kind of that vortex round and round it moves up to the stars down to the ground and it opens the space so we call in love, light, and grace and feel the grace in your heart. And as you breathe in, even the fear and the anxiety, and you breathe out to humanity this fierce love, that this love is like the flame, it's like the breath of the dragon. And as you breathe in your wholeness, your wellness, this new foundation, and as you breathe out this love for self, love for your inner child, the one that is trying to integrate and update, 
that we love ourselves, that we don't abandon that inner child that is creating maybe these backspace things for us to integrate and look at, that we're very compassionate with ourselves and one another, but we stand up for justice, we stand up for what's right. And so now just see kind of in the center, in the space in between, in that diamond within. Allow with that spinning vortex, what that does is it will illuminate pictures. It will illuminate a new reality. Imagine a new world. Imagine peace where we all can see each other's spirit in a body, where we are in wholeness, where we are on a solid foundation, where we are connected with Mother Earth, where we can just drop our problems and move them to Mother Earth and move them to spirit, where truly, if you are fully aligned in the vertical, this time is making you so aligned in the vertical because if you are looking out there, you will get ripped out of center and like sucked up and thrown out. So in this vertical alignment with Mother Earth and Spirit, in the chaos, there is creation. My first book, From Chaos to Creativity. In this chaos is where we have kind of this energy of black, all creative energy. So I am just sending out to all of you love and light. It's kind of the energy from above and below, moving it out like waves. And let's just move it out across our nation into the world. This wave energy and to those who have suffered to the black lives that do matter that they are our brothers and sisters that we are spirits and they have strong voices and let their voices be heard and let our white voices or people of color just our voices support their voices in this new time And just send kind of from, from the void, from the emptiness, from the darkness, allow a new color to come out and see it right out in front of you like a diamond. And just set an intention in that. And when you see that intention, kind of let it reflect to yourself and reflect it to everyone else. Because when you can see that in them, then it can manifest for you. Send that intention up to spirit and ask for spirit's blessing and send it into the ground and ask for mother earth to bring it into form. So all creation is born. So I'm sending my love to you. And if you have any questions, please um, just text them and um, anything that you want me to look at. Love you guys. <laughs> Nina, Karen. All right. Thank you so much for joining and um, I will um, put this on YouTube and um, thank you. Let's see. Do you have love you? I love you too. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye.